Finally, step three. What should you actually test for? Here's a list to keep in mind. First, you have your API's functionality. These are your functional tests. Is the API doing exactly what it's supposed to? Then there's data validation. Does it accept valid inputs and reject invalid ones? Then you have error handling. Does it return the right error codes and the right error messaging? There's security. Are your tokens and your authentication handled properly? Can you access any data that it shouldn't? You have your performance tests. How fast are your responses? Can your API handle all the load under stress? Then you have your edge case testing. What happens when you push your API's boundaries? Like for example, you give it some extremely large payloads or flood it with lots of requests. Then you have contract testing. Does your API consistently adhere to its schema and specification? Like for example, open API or Swagger documentations. This actually helps catch breaking changes early. How well does this API interact with other services and components in your system? And then finally, you have regression testing. Are all of your previous features working exactly as they expected if you submit some sort of change? By combining these types of tests, along with the three categories that we've discussed earlier, happy path, endpoint specific, negative path tests, you can build a reliable API testing strategy, which can give your team confidence every time you release new features. The key takeaway here is that API testing isn't about just throwing some data at an endpoint and hoping for a 200 OK. It's about being intentional. It's about understanding what your API is, what it does, what kind of data is returned, and how it performs under pressure. A solid testing plan is key, and it helps you build confidence in your APIs.